Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to paint a beautiful stag uh, in a forest. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is use my Peebo drawing gum to mask out the shape of the stag. There we are. Uh, so that I can paint the background and uh, keep the stag space white so I can paint that in later, keeping the light colours. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just wetting parts of my paper with this brush. This is a medium-sized hardhead brush, uh, as you could see there. And uh, it's very good for covering uh, large areas quite quickly. Uh, also, it's got a nice sort of flat uh, chisel edge you can see I'm using here to get some nice uh, streaks and dabs of colour. The first colour I'm starting with is Perylene Green, uh, it's a wonderful forest green. And you can see now I am adding a sap green over the top, uh, which is a lovely, a sort of a bright spring green to my mind. Uh, I find that the combination of these two uh, is really, really lovely, uh, very enjoyable to work with uh, and, and to look at, which is really rather the, uh, the point of the whole thing. So. Uh, <laughs> You can see I'm using my brush uh, as a damp brush. You can see I've just put more water on it uh, to pull some of the paint up that I've put from the ground there, uh, echoing the colours that I've decided to use for the forest floor and uh, pulling them up, starting to create the soft illusion of uh, trees and uh, greenery behind the shape of the stag. And now I'm coming in with my third colour. This is light red. Uh, and when combined with greens, it gives this lovely, uh, almost autumnal feel. Uh, it's not quite a brown, so it's not sort of darkening the, um, the palette down. It's got this lovely uh, vivid hue, which I uh, really enjoy using at the moment. Light red is one of my new favourites. Uh, and I think it works wonderfully with the greens in this picture. Um, although it is a very powerful colour, uh, so you do need to be careful to not uh, overuse it as it can very easily um, overpower all the other colours uh, in your palette. Uh, but I'm just using it here today to give a slight uh, autumnal feel to this forest scene. As you can see, I'm using a variety of brushes uh, to get the uh, effects I want for the backdrop. This is a, a medium sized flat brush. Um, I will put a list of my materials and my brushes, the uh, shapes and sizes uh, in the description below the video. So if anybody's interested, uh, then please feel free to check that out. Uh, whilst we're here, I might as well tell you, my paper uh, is Saunders Waterford, um, a quarter imperial sheet size, so uh, roughly A3, which uh, just gives you some idea of the scale we're working on today. Uh, now this is the fourth colour that I'm introducing to this painting. Uh, this is uh, Burnt Umber, which uh, I'm using uh, to create a lovely wide branching tree. You can see I'm just really going in here with the hardy brush uh, and just sort of sweeping the paint on, not quite willy-nilly, but sort of, sort of certainly uh, giving it a bit of a go because uh, I don't need this to be too um, sort of picture perfect. I wanted a lovely sort of abstract background to uh, bring the stag into prominence. You can see here, darkening down that tree, those bright browns uh, with some more perylene green. You will see a lot of that 
in this video and a lot of uh, this as well. I'm just sort of dabbing here with the flat uh, chisel edge of the Harto brush uh, like I do with uh, any flat brush really just to give some interesting shapes and make some interesting uh, tree-ish uh, marks. can see here I'm just using another flat brush to add in uh, some lovely sort of grassy foresty plant marks uh, bringing a little bit more colour and texture into this foreground so it's not so dark I don't want it to look flat either. Uh, as I've been painting as I'm sure you've noticed the first sort of initial marks oh there we go there's my flat brush <laughs> I'm waiting for it to come into focus um, yes, the uh, first marks that I made uh, initially with the Harto brush, with the wide brush, uh, you can see, well, I mean, you'll be able to see when the camera decides to focus again, um, that they've sort of uh, diffused and the colours have softened and uh, blended nicely into each other. Uh, this is a, a process in watercolour painting that most of you will probably be familiar with. Uh, this is a technique called wet on wet. Uh, layering wet paint sort of next to one another uh, and allowing for sort of soft edges and soft outlines to sort of diffuse into one another. Huh. There we are, got the focus back, sorry about that. You'll be able to see in a minute that I wasn't really happy with this uh, streak of colour I've put on the right side. And I'm trying to lift it out a little bit. Uh, this paper, this Saunders Waterford paper, is 100% cotton. And while it's wonderful in many respects, um, it doesn't lift uh, the colour very easily. Um, it really, really sucks in the colour when I paint. So if I make a mistake, it's slightly harder <laughs> to lift lift the colour out. But um, you can see here, I just I just didn't really like that brown that I'd mixed uh, and swept up the side. So I pulled it out and I've put some green in instead. And I think it looks a lot nicer. And here we are. I've um, set aside the painting for a little while to dry and now I've come back to it. Uh, it's almost completely dry, still a little bit damp in parts, but certainly dry enough for me to layer up some more paint on top of uh, where I've got these sort of soft diffused sort of plant streaks. Um, 
I'm now coming in with a smaller brush to put in a little bit of foreground detail uh, and it's dry enough for the paint not to uh, run and spread and blend uh, as I put the marks in. They will, uh, they will stay crisp. So what I'm doing here is using a fine brush. This is my round brush, I think triple zero size, came from a multi-pack. Uh, it's a simple uh, synthetic brush, but it works quite well. You can see I'm just using little uh, sort of flicking motions to get some small sort of grasses, sedges, sort of general bracken detail in the foreground uh, and around the uh, hooves of the stack. Now here I'm just going to demonstrate uh, another brush you can use uh, to make these marks, these sort of uh, grassy reed sort of tussocks. Uh, this is a rigger brush, um, I think it's a small size. Uh, you can generally, uh, you can either buy them individually or um, multi-packs, which is great, you generally get about four to a pack. Um, they come to a very fine point as you can see, but they're quite uh, a long, soft brush and they hold quite a lot of water and paint in them so you don't need to keep going back and picking up fresh paint uh, as often as you do with the fine detail brush. You can see I'm able to make sort of longer um, marks with this. Uh, it is uh, quite soft and flexible though uh, so you do need uh, some element of control uh, when using it. Uh, they are a little awkward to start with but um, I've been finding that I quite enjoy using these now. Um, again I will put the precise uh, brush that I use here in the description below the video. Now that I'm happy with uh, the foreground detail, I'm using this Jakar, the Hod Bristle Stippling Brush. Um, I think these are originally, or at least uh, where I bought it from, originally designed to uh, be used with acrylic paints and stencils, that sort of thing. Uh, it's a very sturdy brush, um, but I also find it's great for creating a stippling texture with watercolour. Uh, and I'm just going to use it quite liberally here. Uh, to create a sort of uh, uh, misty, mossy um, effects. You can see here I'm having to hold on to my board because you really have to um, jab at it quite hard <laughs> with, the, uh, with the brush and um, if your board isn't properly secured then it can uh, move it about a bit. Uh, you have to be quite authoritative with the, um, the bristle brush. But if you jab too gently, gently, sorry, like I did there, uh, you don't really get quite the um, the marks that you need. So you, you you must be quite firm with this sort of brush. Obviously, there are uh, different sort of uh, stippling brushes you can get, probably better suited for watercolor. Uh, but this is what I had to hand, so this is what I used. Um, I'm also using basically. Um, Perylene green, uh, almost straight from the tube. This is a tube paint uh, because I found that if I uh, used too much water, 
with this stippling brush um, I would not get the um, the sort of the misty dotty sort of lovely stippled marks that I was after uh, it would sort of it, it comes out as a blob uh, and um, whilst blobs are good uh, in their own right I'm sure and in some places um, I was not feeling uh, in a blobby mood today so uh, yes this is uh, pretty much straight uh, paint from the tube with very little water indeed And there we are, happy with the background, it's all dry, it's finished, uh, essentially, except for um, the hard part, I suppose, which is filling in the stag. Um, I've rubbed off the masking fluid, it's easily done just using your thumb or, or fingers, uh, leaving this uh, white space to, to be filled in, essentially. And I'm just starting off by uh, filling in this uh, the body of the stag uh, using raw umber and um, I had a large uh, mop brush to uh, just put in that bulk of colour straight away. Uh, this is going to be uh, a, a lesson in layering essentially, well not a, a lesson as such but you'll, uh, you'll see I'm using, I, I basically just use the one colour for this, uh, for certainly for the stag's fur. Um, you could use more obviously, uh, but I wanted to keep the tones very similar and just explore what I could do by varying the level of paint uh, and the concentration of water uh, in the colour. So you'll see I start with quite a light colour and I'm just sort of beginning to uh, darken it down um, along the stag's back. Now I'm using um, some tissue to pull out a little bit of paint uh, and just get some interesting texture along the ridge there. This is um, a great technique to use to uh, pull colour out if you're quite quick. You can see it's left some interesting uh, marks, particularly uh, some pale marks along the back and uh, near the rump <laughs> there, uh, which I think actually work uh, really well for the uh, stag. Uh, as the um, some of the photos that I looked at for reference, uh, a lot of the deer had these lovely um, uh, speckled, almost mottled sort of brown and white coats, which is uh, what I was trying to emulate here today. Here you can see I'm using a slightly darker colour uh, rather than a pencil outline or anything like that. This is just a slightly uh, darker concentration of the raw umber paint to um, outline the musculature of the stag's foreleg. Uh, just that slight angle where it goes up and into the body just to show the differentiation of that limb uh, from the rest of the animal. You can see I've just done it on the hind limb there as well. Just, uh, a gentle sweep of paint just to give the uh, impression of that um, of the uh, the correct anatomy of the animal uh, as you can see this not this is not uh, an attempt at a photorealistic painting or anything of the kind this is uh, impressionistic and designed to be you know it, this is 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 I wouldn't call it easy but I would say that it's easier than certain other uh, paintings or tutorials that I've seen for animals. This is essentially one colour 
Dracula's dad too, really, for the eyes and the antlers, but um, yes, for this for this body you only need this one colour, uh, raw umber, and you just need to uh, to to learn to uh, use the colours, uh, the, the paints, sorry, <laughs> use the tones uh, to really uh, give distinction here. As you can see, I'm now using uh, a small flat brush to uh, fill in the front part of the stag's uh, coat. Mane, I was going to call it, but that's lines, isn't it? But um, uh, some stags do have this lovely sort of um, fluffy, shaggy sort of... Um, I suppose it sort of is a mane of sorts, isn't it? Um, if anybody knows the correct term for that, or if there even is one, um, please leave it in the comments below. Um, I really enjoyed looking at um, <laughs> photographs of deer for uh, preparation for this uh, painting. Uh, probably spent more time on that research than uh, I should have, but you know what it's like when you start researching something. It's very easy to sort of fall down the uh, metaphorical rabbit hole, as it were. Again, just using uh, some simple uh, rolled up tissue here to add a little bit of interesting texture just dabbing in a little bit of extra colour um, hoping that through this you'll be able to see uh, just how versatile uh, watercolour paints can be. You can see all these different sort of tones and textures uh, using just one paint for this lovely animal.
skin you can see here I'm just layering up this colour you see me adding a little bit of darker sort of shading along the ridge of the ears and just to the sides of the animal's face giving the impression of the muzzle which is um, facing towards us so we have a little bit of foreshortening to deal with there And this is just a little bit of Payne's Grey uh, into the muzzle there just to uh, mix with the raw umber just to give a little bit of definition. A little sweet little soft uh, black nose, black grey, you know, depending on the light. Uh, and so yes, this is our last colour that I will be introducing. Uh, you can see I am using this colour for the antlers. This is Payne's Grey mixed with a little uh, raw umber to sort of soften it down uh, and quite a lot of water as well so that it's not too dark uh, because the um, antler colour uh, is quite pale in some of the photos that I looked at um, and sort of uh, almost uh, like an ashen colour in places so I didn't want to just make it brown the same colour as the stag uh, that would be boring uh, which is why I've introduced this colour and I'm using them both to uh, sort of give the antlers a little bit of uh, definition and interesting texture. Uh, you will see that I'm also leaving a little bit of white space with these antlers as well, uh, which is where I want to show the um, which, where I want to show it uh, catching the light, leaving a little bit of a, a gleam of sunlight. There we go, just blending those antlers in uh, so that they join the rest of the head quite nicely. And you can see here that I'm just using a very fine detail brush uh, to just put in a few more darts where needed. This is a very, very fine brush. Uh, the name escapes me at this current moment, as it always does. But like I said, um, I'll uh, put a list in the description underneath the video detailing the exact uh, make and model of the brushes. I believe this is um, a brush designed for modelling. Uh, you know, sort of miniatures and whatnot, so it's very, very fine, which is why I'm using it uh, to do the eyes here. So this is the, the last step, and, uh, well, second to last, I need to do his little hooves, but this is the most nerve-wracking, certainly. Uh, you can see I'm using Payne's Grey uh, for the eyes. It's dark enough to pass for black without being too sort of flat. Uh, and I'm filling in the eyes, leaving a little bit of white space 
There we go, zooming in so you can see properly. Left a little bit of white space at the top left corner to give the uh, impression of the light sort of glinting off the, uh, the animal's eye. And there we go. Just a little bit more definition on the shape. Uh, but I'm pleased with that. I must say, it's the most nerve-wracking part of a painting, doing the eyes, which is why most of the time I do them first, but in this case I sort of forgot about that. Left them to last and then went, oh no. <laughs> uh, because if you mess up the eyes, you sort of end up messing up the whole thing, really. Um, which is why I'm so glad that it's worked out well. Uh, I'm really pleased with how the eyes turned out here. I think you can really sort of see him looking at you. Uh, looking out of the painting at us. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's what I always say, is to make sure you leave a little bit of white space in the eyes. And now I'm just quickly uh, filling in around the feet. You can see here, I'm using a fine brush, uh, and this is a little bit of Payne's Grey mixed with uh, some perylene green, nice dark tones to bring a bit of shadow in and uh, make sure we properly sort of root uh, the stag in uh, the landscape. Because of our use of masking fluid here, uh, he did sort of rather look like he was hovering above the shrubbery rather than standing in it, <laughs> which is not the impression I wanted to convey. So you can see here, I'm just going in, so the last little thing to do is to make sure we uh, properly root him in the landscape by uh, just finishing off those grasses around his hooves, uh, making sure that he is properly standing and looking majestic, uh, yes, and properly um, properly based in his lovely forest. Ah, there we are, there's my tiny brush. <laughs> Feel free to uh, pause the video to get a good old look at it. And there we are, the finished piece. Uh, I'm sorry if the light has changed whilst I've been filming this. Uh, daylight hours are sh currently short at the moment uh, in the UK in winter. Uh, this is a little brighter, this is with the electric light, so the colours are slightly washed out but not too much I think. I'm really pleased with how this turned out uh, and I really hope you enjoyed watching the process as well. Uh, this is obviously not the easiest or simplest sort of beginners tutorial out there but I really do think uh, that with proper application of paint uh, and following along um, it was uh, you can certainly uh, follow along and paint this beautiful stag um, I really think everybody should uh, have a go at this regardless of ability. Um, so yeah, please let me know how you get on in the comments. Um, I always love hearing about uh, your work, your paintings, uh, your opinions. Uh, so yes, please uh, drop a like if you enjoyed. Please subscribe to my channel for more like this. And I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Uh, bye for now.